What's up, YouTube? And what you know, my name is Domino with the Zero. Welcome to our review of Sun and Moon anime episode number 46. Now, I'm going to be saying this in the, at the beginning of a bunch of episodes or a bunch of videos um, for a little while, but this is going to be the second video on this Monday. Um, the second video of each day is just going to change until Ultra Sun and Moon comes out, I think. I couldn't decide on what game to play through in that time because I don't want to rush through a game. Especially a game that I haven't already played on the channel. Um, so that's going to be this episode. Now this episode, um, like the last one, was kind of underwhelming. And I think part of that is just that I'm not really a fan of Ditto. Um, I think we've had enough Ditto episodes. It seems like every generation, or at least every other generation, there's got to be at, at least one episode focusing around Ditto. Um, but this episode starts off with Lily. We see her journaling again. So... She was at the beginning of the last episode, and I'm wondering if this is going to become a normal thing. Uh, but you see her journaling. It's real quick. She's journaling about Nebby, talking about the last episode where they went through all their teleport stuff. Um, and she seems super happy about the whole Nebby thing. Then we see the gang traveling over to Aether Paradise, and Lily seems to be extremely excited. Turns out because that's, that's because, or at least they think because, they're going to be getting a tour around... Um, around Aether Paradise. Um, Wick and Salvo, uh, I don't remember Salvo's actual name. I could probably look it up here real quick. Um, hold on, hold on, I, I meant to look this up. Baba, so uh, I'm just gonna call him Salvo because I really don't like him at all, but um, they meet up, they greet the gang. Lusamine is busy with her work so she can't greet the gang. And we certainly see that throughout the episode. Um, Salvo, where's Nebby? And goes to grab Nebby out of Ash's backpack and Nebby teleports out of the way. And that's the, you've seen it in GIFs and stuff like that. That's where he grabs Rowlet and throws Rowlet out. Uh, and Ash is visibly not happy with Salvo, which I'm down for that. I hate Salvo as a character. I even wrote it in my notes in here somewhere. Uh, but we see that Team Rocket is at Aether Paradise. Um, after the intro of the episode, the episode's called, Come On, Let's Search for the Transformed Ditto. Um, Team Rocket recaps how they got to Aether, and it turns out that Salvo himself was the one that came up and entered, or came up to their donut shop and apparently hired them to come out to Aether. So how long is that going to last? Probably not too long, um, as do most of Team Rocket's jobs that they get. Um, <laughs> the gang walks out to see Lusamine's workhouse, which is a mansion. Um, Lusamine comes down to greet the gang, but is got gets a phone call having to turn around and it's a really awkward encounter and Lusamine's not herself in this episode. I was kind of liking Lusamine as a character, but this episode, not as much. Um, Salvo takes note of Ash feeding Nebby the little stars. Uh, and you can see him in the background being all evil and stuff. Um, Lusamine says that she called the group there so that she could talk to them while she's working. Um, that way they wouldn't be able to leave. From that point, Lily gets really mad and encourages the gang that they, she'll show them around. Turns out that Wick and Sal Bo are going to show the group around. Uh, at the Paradise, there are a whole bunch of Pokemon. It's actually really cool. Pokemon from all generations, specifically a lot of 5th gen Pokemon, I noticed. That probably means absolutely nothing. Uh, but there were a lot of 5th generation Pokemon. We then see Professor Burnett emerge from the water. And this is in my notes where I put the Salbo as an absolutely awful character. And then Nebby just like wanders off. Her usual, Nebby's out of the bag, Nebby's wandering off. And then it kind of gets to the point of the episode where we see a whole bunch of Ditto. Um, and they're gonna go in and give vaccines to the Ditto. And so each of the each of the person in the gang is holding their Ditto. And of course, when it gets to Sophocles Ditto to receive his vaccine, the Ditto runs away. <sighs> Um, so, of, uh, of course, it's uh, Sophocles, and they have to go search for this missing ditto. Uh, at this point, we see Team Rocket dragging a huge bag of trash through the Aether Paradise because they're trying to lure, remember they said, the small coughing that they saw. Um, so we can't find ditto. Um, we see ditto start showing up as each of the transformed mons. It shows up as Rotom Dex, Execute, Jigglypuff, Alolan Vulpix, and Psyduck. Um, the Quagsire that it showed, they were all looking for Pokemon that just had Ditto's little beady eyes. Uh, but as you know, Quagsire has the same little beady eyes. So it's, it's, it's a funny little scene. Um, 
Hold on, where are we? Okay, yeah. So Team Rocket at that point is seen snacking on the little stars that Nebby likes, and Nebby teleports in, eats the star, teleports away. Uh, but that foreshadows what happens at the end of the episode. Um, when the Alolan Vulpix walks up to um, walks up to Lily to be picked up. Lily has this little feeling that she can't touch a Lolan Vulpix. Turns out that's the ditto. Ash jumps in and grabs it, and the ditto's all caught. Um, so they talk about how Aether Paradise's job is to help Pokemon be ready to go back into the, the regular world where they're getting vaccines and being trained not to be violent, etc. etc. Lucibine shows up where Lily is still visibly upset. Um, Lucibine hugs Lily again and gets another phone call. So Lucimine has to walk away, and I'm wondering, it's about work, it's about Aether Paradise, so I wonder if she's talking to Guzma, I, I don't know. I wonder if she's talking to the Ultra Recon Squad. I have absolutely no idea, but Lucimine's, I don't know. Uh, Salbo is being really mad, but this is where the episode kind of picks up. Uh, and it's actually like the last minute and a half of, or two minutes of the episode. So Salbo's mad and walks away and says that Lily being able to touch Pokemon could be trouble, and that she had forgotten something that happened in her past. If she were to remember that, there could things could be very bad. Um, so she, so Sabo takes the elevator downstairs, uh, where we see Team Mar Team Rocket walking around the basement of the Aether Paradise. If you remember in the games, this is where like all of the documents and stuff like that are. Well, Team Rocket walks into a room that has a door open, and they start. Um, Meowth sees all of these notes that are about Type Null. Uh, and Meowth, he like starts having a weird feeling that they shouldn't be reading through this stuff. And that's when Nebby teleports back in to eat some more of the stars that uh, that Jesse just so happens to be eating. How did they know that? I mean, how did they come across those stars when only it was Sophocles? I don't know. It's it's a very big coincidence. Um, it's very very interesting writing. I think that Sophocles had to show the rest of the gang these stars. And then Jesse just so happens to be, I don't know, it's it. Whatever. Um, but that's when, uh, you know, Nebby teleports away, of course. And that's when Salvo walks in. He's like, why are you in my lab? Team Rocket says that they're not doing anything. They just kind of all have a laugh together. And that's the end of the episode. So it kind of set up for the future. Again, we kind of said that in the last episode and the episode before. It's really building up to where Nebby is going to be a really big storyline. I just, I, I, I have no idea what they're going to do because with the Ultra Sun and Moon stuff coming, are they going to do that storyline? Like, they could with where we're sitting compared, like in the anime compared to the release of those games, they could definitely do something like that. I don't know, it'll be very interesting. Uh, but in the next episode, um, Rotom is like using his voice changing system to try and come up with a better way for Ash to call on his Z moves. Like instead of saying let's use all of our power or whatever it is that he says. Um, and I don't know, I don't think that's gonna go anywhere, but Gladion is back. That's the big thing with the next with the next episode. And he has a red Z ring. I don't remember what he had the last time, but I'm wondering if that's new and where that'll go. Like what's special about it? Does he have the new Z ring that Ash is soon to get? Um, but we see Ash's Lycanroc versus Type Null, and they're fighting it out. And then at the very end, we see um, we see Lycanroc's eyes turn red. So he's probably going to be using like Counter or something like that. Um, so it's looking like next week will actually be another good episode. It's been a few weeks, uh, but that's it for this episode. As always, let me know what your favorite part was in the comments below, and we will see you next week for episode 47 review of the Sun and Moon anime. Until then. Have a blessed day.